and welcome to the Heritage Boatworks podcast, episode number 10. I'm your host, Jed Lavoy. Hello, folks. Welcome back. It's been a month. <laughs> it's been a quick month, actually. Um, the weather seemed to be getting better, but now, uh, today I think it was probably 40, even less with the wind chill and raining and pretty miserable. So hopefully, I said this last podcast, but hopefully the next time we talk we'll be soaring into the mid-60s. I think I said exactly that on the last podcast. Didn't really work out so well for us. But we should be getting some better weather uh, coming up this weekend. So we're hoping for mid-60s tomorrow, maybe Saturday. Uh, it should uh, it should be improving. So if you would like to connect with me on social media, I'm pretty active uh, on Facebook, Twitter. I'm also on Flickr. You can take a look at a lot of my photographs on Flickr if you like the, the photo work I do. My uh, profile name for those three sites is Heritage, B as in boy, W as in whiskey. Um, So check me out there. Uh, Give me a like. Give me a tweet. Uh, Whatever you do on Flickr. I'm not sure what you do on Flickr. I think you follow people on Flickr. Uh, But I post all of my photos on Flickr as as, uh, as well as the podcast pages. So check that out. So a couple of updates on Heritage Boatworks. Uh, Still having a great time doing this. Um, I do still see growth. Uh, I have a lot of uh, new subscriptions, probably another 20% growth in the month. The Facebook page seems to be lighting up pretty well. I'm getting a lot of likes coming in. It's it's amazing with the Internet. Uh, I haven't really mastered the whole uh, Google Analytics and tracking and everything else, but... I'll see a day uh, where my podcast downloads skyrocket or maybe one of my blog posts will get like 100% more views than it normally gets in a day. So it, it's always kind of interesting to to wonder where that traffic came from. So my name must have gotten out there somewhere. I, I do some tracking on Google Analytics and, and I sometimes I can track down where it came from. But uh, it's fun to watch. It's really fun to watch. Uh, I am getting a lot of feedback from from folks, and I thank you for that. Uh, The more feedback, the more the merrier, I suppose, is the term. I always like constructive criticism, Um, always trying to make the show better, whatever I can do. Uh, Whatever you guys want to hear out there, just let me know. Shoot me an email. I am open to suggestions. Took a look at the Wooden Boat Show coming up in Mystic this summer. Uh, I actually entered my... um, my paddleboard in the uh, I Built It section. There's, they have a, a section of the show called I Built It where you just go hang out and um, kind of show off your boat and talk about it. Unfortunately, the only one I have that's in kind of showable condition at this point is uh, is the stand-up paddleboard. Everything else is pretty beat up uh, or in construction. So I'm gonna, I'll bring the paddleboard out. Paddleboards seem to be real popular right now, and uh, they're actually the top-selling boat at uh, Boat Plan at, at uh, Chesapeake Lightcraft. So they're definitely uh, on the uprise. So I think people will be pretty interested to see, and, uh, and I'll hopefully I'll be able to get the word out about Heritage Boat Works a little bit more there as well. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, how about boat building class? So if you've been following my blogs, you know that uh, I, I'm running a, a series of blogs, uh, boat building class and kayak building class. I'm building a Bulger Bobcat with my eight-year-old daughter. Uh, yes, a very big undertaking uh, for an eight-year-old. So I'm doing a lot of it on my own and kind of saving the fun parts for her when we're down there together. And uh, for my son, who's six now, I'm building a wood duck kayak, which is a little easier construction, a um, little, uh, little less chance of losing his attention. Because uh, we know kids' attention spans are about eight seconds long, so it, uh, it's a challenge to keep them interested in it. But uh, I always try to find something fun for them to do, whether it's hammering nails or... or Stitching together some panels or drilling holes, they always seem to enjoy doing those things. So 
It's been fun. Uh, it's been slow going, obviously. Um, one problem I did run into is the stem for the bobcat. Uh, it involves laminating a piece, a bunch of pieces of plywood together to get the curve of the stem. And I did it with my daughter, and we we kind of rushed through it because it's. Uh, I mean, we had to laminate I think ten pieces of of plywood to get to the two and a half inch thickness. So we had to move fairly quickly um, before the epoxy set up. I talked her through every part of it, and unfortunately, while I was talking her through it, I wasn't paying attention to the details that I need to pay attention to. So once we were all done, I wrapped the whole stem in wax paper and put some weights on it to uh, as a kind of a clamp. But unfortunately, the stem uh, kind of slid a little bit uh, under the weight. I had some pegs in there, but the pegs probably weren't tight enough. So when I came down the next morning, the whole thing looked like uh, looks like it was staggered. It looked like a little mini staircase, so to speak. The epoxy, the, the slipperiness of the epoxy had caused all the pieces to kind of slide off a little bit. So I threw it on the belt sander and, um, and cleaned it up. It came out very nice, but the problem was is this threw off all of the angles and the curve and the and the proportions of it. So now I'm at a stage where I'm starting to fix the panels and fix the bottom to the stem and I'm, I'm realizing that it, it just doesn't work. So back to the drawing board. Well, not really the drawing board, more of a cutting board. Uh, I'm just going to cut out a new stem and laminate it myself and, uh, and move on from that phase. So that, uh, not a big deal, but kind of a learning experience for me in that um, even though I'm teaching the kids, I need to make sure I'm paying the attention to detail that the boat needs. So, uh, so I'll probably have Maggie help me out with that, and she can learn from that as well, and we will move forward. And uh, the boat's looking, looking good. You can uh, check out the blog. There's some pictures of it. Uh, I've got the bottom panel on, and the side panels are tacked on. Um, once I get the stem cut out again, uh, I'll be able to put those on there permanently and start bending on the bilge panels, which is, uh, which is a challenge, so, so I've read. So the, I'm look, really looking forward to that. Uh, and then once that's on, then that pretty much the hull of the boat is built, um, minus the epoxy, of course. But that'll be an exciting fade stage for, for Maggie to see the boat kind of taking shape at that point. Uh, as far as the kayak goes, we're just stitching that together with Harry. Um, Harry's attention is a little harder to keep, um, so I, I end up doing a lot. I usually only have him down there for, for 15 or 20 minutes at a time just to do a couple of things. He, uh, a six-year-old, he's kind of a jock, too. He's, he's kind of an action type of kid. You know, things have got to be 100 miles an hour uh, 100% of the time and uh, having him slow down to take his time on a project is, is a challenge but uh, I take advantage of the fact that he just loves to spend time with his dad down in the shop and, uh, and he, he loves learning so I, I try to teach him everything I can as we're going so uh, my wife's got a ton of stuff going on with her job right now. So my time down there has been a little bit limited. Um, I'm definitely not going to get the Bobcat done this summer. Um, I should have the kayak done, I'm hoping, mid-summer. Um, enough so Harry can take it out and try it out a bit. Uh, but go check out the blog. If you go on to Heritage Boatworks forward slash blog and just look for the posts that either say kayak building school or boat building school. Uh, and I blog pretty frequently about that. I've blogged, I think, three times this month regarding boat building. Uh, and the other blog on there is about, um, is about my old sturdy cat, cat boat, a day out in the sea with her. She was, uh, she was one of my favorites. So it's a, it's a good read of a nice day out in the ocean. So why don't we move along into our interview this week. My interview this week is with Tony Davis. Tony is the owner of uh, Aries Pond Boatyard in Orleans, Massachusetts. Aries Pond, builds, uh, Aries Pond Boatyard builds cat boats, beautiful, beautiful cat boats. And, and Tony explains the design of those in the interview. But the beauty of the Aries Pond boat is that everything's hand laid, uh, and they also offer a great deal of customization. I mean, when you order a boat from Aries Pond, 
you kind of you order the shell from them, but then you you kind of go through and and add your own tweaks to it, like teak paneling, teak staves in the cockpit, and and uh, maybe some woodwork over the centerboard. Or I mean, you can add all sorts of kind of customizations to it, and and a lot of boat manufacturers offer that. But Aries Pond kind of goes the next step, and you can really customize any part of the boat that you want, and they're willing to do it. And the boats are just gorgeous. They're they're gorgeous. I've seen them for years, and and there was a time maybe uh, maybe about three years ago that I tried to get out to Aries Pond. It's kind of in a weird spot in Orleans, and uh, I tried to get out there with my wife, and we had two kids in the car, and we used to always kind of just take adventure adventures on the Cape because um, we're down there every weekend. So we just throw the kids in the car and say, hey, let's take a left here and see where it goes. So one day I knew we were kind of close to Orleans, so I just figured, hey, you know what, let's go see if we can find Aries Pond. So we looked and looked, and uh, the ride just kind of seemed to go on and on and on. And um, we finally found it, but at that point the kids were pretty much done with the car. My wife was pretty much done with my my persistence about it. And uh, I, I got out of the truck, walked around the boatyard, looked in the store, and, and left, uh, all in a matter of about 10 minutes just so my wife wouldn't kill me when I got back in the car and uh, it, it seemed very odd to me because the the property that Aries Pond was was on was very very small and the shop itself was just two small garage bays so I, I was always kind of confused about it I didn't give it a whole lot of thought but I was always kind of confused that uh, are they building these cat boats just in those two bays and it just very it was very odd to me. It was almost like a, a shop that was smaller than my shop in my basement. So uh, on this tour, he brought me up to the top half of the property, and there's two large buildings up there with with uh, a, a finished shop and a layup shop and everything else up there. So it it all kind of came came to fruition when when uh, Tony took me for a tour. But, uh, but Tony's got a great story about how he got involved in boat building, um, about the boat he built, uh, a 30-foot uh, Lyle Hess design, a Falmouth cutter, absolutely beautiful boat that he built when he was young and is still uh, very much alive and, and sailing today, cruising as a matter of fact. Um, and there's a link to um, some pictures of that boat on the podcast page so go check that out it's at heritageboatworks.com forward slash hbw010 so heritage boatworks 10 is what that stands for hbw010 so go check that out and uh all my pictures are there and the stories of the interview and uh and i hope you enjoy it i i really enjoyed sitting down with tony what a great guy and a great story and, and just some absolutely beautiful boats. I encourage you to go out there and check it out because uh, Aries Pond is kind of a, a community boating center as well as, as a manufacturer of beautiful boats. So definitely head out there, check it out, and talk to Tony if he's, if he's got the time. And, uh, and enjoy the interview. Take it away. Okay, welcome back to Heritage Boat Works. Uh, I'm coming to you from uh, Orleans, Massachusetts. We're here at Aries Pond Boatyard, and I am joined by Tony Davis, the owner. Welcome to Heritage Boatworks, Tony. Oh, thank you. Yep. So uh, Tony and I met uh, for the first time. I've been down to Aries Pond Boatyard a number of times. I've swung by here with my family and just roamed around, um, <laughs> gotten the stairs from the from the yard guys. What was that? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I've been here a handful of times. I didn't realize there's a whole other piece of uh, of Aries Pond up on the hill where they where they actually build the boats. Uh, and Tony's going to bring me for a tour after this, which is going to be great. That'll all be on the show notes on the website. So this is the first time I've actually spoken with Tony. We met at the Cat Boat Association show um, where they were showing some Aries Pond um, boats there. I think you had a link there. Was that right? Yeah, we had the uh, the 16 open links. Yeah, yeah. yeah. beautiful yeah. boat, beautiful boat. Um, so yeah, why don't we, uh, why don't we start with you, uh, Tony, we'll get a little history. Um, now where, where did you grow up? I grew up in, uh, Westwood, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. Mm -hmm. And after high school in the area, um, I moved to, my family moved up to Maine and I followed, uh, and I was to, and I worked in Deer Isle, uh, building boats mm -hmm. 
and it's kind of a long story how it all happened, but that's where I, I learned to trade. Now, where is Deer Isle? Deer Isle is um, in the Agamogan Reach. Uh, Stonington is the biggest town on the island, and my family lived in Brooklyn, Maine. Okay. And that's where, I, out of high school, I decided I was I was going to give a give a shot at the wooden boat trade, and I apprenticed with uh, Arno Day, who is a lobster boat builder on Little Deer Isle, mm -hmm. and so I built lobster boats with him, and I also uh, took a corner of a shop and built a Lyle Hess uh, 30-foot cutter uh, with his help and on my time, and we actually bartered. I'd work for him building lobster boats, and he'd work, help me plank the boat, and, and, and basically as an apprentice learning my learning as I, as I built the boat with him there to answer questions. So then when that boat was launched, I, I set sail and ended up uh, sailing down to Connecticut area, got a job, had no money at that point, uh, worked in Connecticut at Essex Boat Works mm -hmm. as a rigger and carpenter, and then eventually ended up back in Boston uh, finishing the Spirit of Massachusetts. And she's a 125-foot uh, schooner, helped finish the interior, get her underway. And then I managed their shop and taught boat building classes. And I was, during that time, I was starting a family and living aboard the cutter. And we were getting restless. And so we were very fortunate to find Aries Pond boatyard for sale and we moved down here in 91 mm -hmm. 1991 and it came with a home which is right above us um, which was ideal to have be able to get a mortgage that included a home and a business yeah that's amazing yeah and it was affordable uh, back then and so we moved, we sailed here and been here ever since Nice. And you, you um, purchased Aries Pond Boatyard in 1990? 1990-91. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We started negotiating in 90 and closed in 91. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. And came with the house and... and well, apartment. The waterfront yeah. view. <laughs> well, yeah, living right within 10 feet of the water. Uh, and it's... Uh, yeah, it's been very good to us. That's fantastic. Now, yeah. where is... Uh, if you know, where's the cutter? The the cut uh, syrinx is uh, just uh, interesting. You ask. Uh, we just got a photo of her looking really good sailing in San Francisco Bay like two weeks ago. Wow! And the f uh, photographer was a friend of a friend and who knew that I built the boat and they wanted to know who owned it and I I didn't. Uh, so this this mystery photo is out there for to figure out who's who's sailing that boat now but she looked great still had a lot of the original fittings um i've heard she won best of show at the uh, port townsend wooden boat show a few years ago and lynn and larry pardee um have seen her in the last six seven years and thought she was in very good shape which Excellent. meant a lot yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a good source for yeah. it. To, a yeah. good judge of uh, of <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, that's great. Um, any chance I can get that picture? Do you have that? Yeah. Is it digital? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I'll go to put that up on the site. Right. Um, that's great. Uh, do you have? Do you own a boat now? I mean, you own Aries Pond Boatyard, but do you have your own personal? No, we're we're as a family, we're starting to think about getting doing that. But I, mean, I as a business, I own about fifteen boats. Um, right. I I have. Uh, I sail customers' boats. I get out on the water a lot, mm -hmm. um, but no, we don't have a, a boat that we cruise in. We do. We when the kids were in the high school, middle school years, we did the chartering right, okay. to get to get south in the winter. Oh, we excellent. did that for years. Uh, so uh, my family like moorings or something. Like yeah, that. exactly. Out of Tortola. Yep. And uh, so we, you know, we still we want to get back to it. But the business just doesn't allow the time to really be able to get away for a week or two in season. Right. And, you know, until we get a boat south in the winter, which is our goal, um, you know, that day's coming, but we're at the moment not. Right, so. right. How old are the kids? Uh, my girls are now out of, in both, in, one in just finishing graduate school, so 25 and 22. Now you think they'd be oh, yeah. into it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they'd be into it as far as uh, meeting us. 
Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they fly down somewhere tropical. Right, absolutely. <laughs> Got to go meet the parents. <laughs> well, because they grew up with it. Right, right. You know, um, they have really great memories. So if they get a call that uh, we're we're down south in the island somewhere, and you know, would you like to sail with us? They, they'll be there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's that, funny how the, the kids seem to have windows of time when they're interested. When they're super young, they want to do everything with you. Yeah. Then they hit that teenage spot where they don't want anything to do yeah. with you. <laughs> then they hit the twenties where they're adults again, and they say, "Hey, you know what? This sounds kind of fun." Yeah, no, it's true. But we're because we grew up in a small little apartment. Um, we're a pretty tight family. We nobody could escape. Right. There was no hiding in our family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Um, so how about um, how about uh, Aries Pond Boatyard? What's give me a little bit of the history of here? So so pre nineteen ninety. Um, sure, sure. Actually, this is interesting timing. Um, Aries, we are going. Aries Pond Boatyard is going into its sixtieth season as a business this year. So we will we're going to in our ads this year. You'll see our, this is our anniversary year, our sixtieth. And it took me twenty five years to figure out, uh, or twenty three years to figure out exactly when this business actually started because. In the 40s, the, uh, the originator, uh, Jim Kidd, was retired Coast Guard, and he set this where we are right now, sitting, as a shop uh, for repairing boats as a hobby. This is He got out of the Coast Guard, uh, end of World War II, uh, not in pretty good situation, not feeling like he really had to work too, too hard, so he had it as a hobby mm -hmm. but in the early 50s he realized that there was a business to be had and so in 54 he he f uh, improved the waterfront put in real boat ramps and made it into a into a boat yard nice. and his first uh i've forgotten his second hand but um there was a dealership here and it was for the wooden beetle cats Oh, interesting. Yeah, he had a relationship with the Beetle Cat shop because there were so many beetles on Pleasant Bay at that time. Probably, I mean, compared to the 100 or so that are here now, maybe 20 right, <laughs> was right. a lot back then. Yeah. So they were coming in for miscellaneous repairs, and instead of trucking them back to South Dartmouth, um, they created a relationship, and so he was uh, sort of a parts mm -hmm. and repair center for Beetle with their okay right right and uh and so jim had it for 25 years as a business and then he sold it to brad and libby fisk okay and their background was with uh was with some boat building but more with o'day boats which at the time we're talking 60s 70s into the 80s was a booming one design boat right and Day's eventually story. became a production boat um so they, Aries Pond, in those years, was the number one O'Day dealer. Interesting. Okay. For the Southeastern Mass. It's amazing how, uh, it's something I, I make note of on my website a lot, is how everything, all these boat builders, you guys all tie into each other. Yeah. Uh, I just interviewed uh, Bill Walmack last, last month. Oh, yeah. Um, prior to that, Cape Cod Shipbuilding, who now owns the rights to the O'Day Day Sailor. Right, O'Day. right, right. So, yeah, it's, it is amazing how everything kind of, seems to move in a full circle around the Cape Cod boat building area. Right. And um, so Libby was a treasurer for O'Day and friends with George O'Day. And so she had that connection to allow the dealership to to blossom here. So this was this boat yard was full of O'Day boats and service and launch and rig and new boats being trucked from New Bedford to here and getting commissioned from the Boston Boat Show or whichever whatever boat show in mm -hmm. New England. And um, and then, but the uh, husband Brad had a was a boat builder, and the manager Merv Hammond at the time they took a wooden. Um, this is early seventies. Took a wooden Edson shock design cat boat um, and modified it mm -hmm. and made a mold off of it and called it the Aries Pond Fourteen. Okay. They changed the shear. They changed the transom a little. They. Put a, a more tradi or a fiberglass combing on with a cap, and then ch and change it from Marconi rig to a gaff rig. Mm -hmm. So very similar in the to the Sturdy Cat, mm -hmm. 
originally, and then and then made it into the Aries Pond 14 and started uh, marketing. Right. And they would build two or three a year, and and to the point where they may be building four or five. And then around 1989, O'Day was going out of business. They had had the boat yard for 25 years and were starting to feel it was a little bit more work than fun and, and put it on the market. And that's where I stepped in as a boat builder, not as a, uh, with any, no experience in marketing, dealerships, uh, retail. So my business plan was to take the boat building side of the business and, and, and grow that, mm-hmm. which is what I knew. And what came with the business was 60 moorings and storage for about 75 boats. So I, so I want a big, big source of income. Right. So I took those in. those income sources and focused on that. Okay, we're going to fill them. And the, at the time, the mooring field wasn't full. So I saw income there. So we marketed the mooring rental, which would lead to more storage. Mm-hmm. And, and we would build, the goal was 10 boats a year. And so we started going to more boat shows. And, and we, we reached that goal in about eight, about eight years into it, and that allowed us to build another storage shed and, 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 and grow the business. And we introduced new designs, uh, the Pleasant Bay launch, the uh, 16-foot links uh, along the way. What's the most popular boat you have now that you offer? Well, right at the moment, there's a little bit of a transition. The, the 14 which is definitely our most popular boat all these years. But at the moment, the last two years, the 16 uh, Open, mm-hmm. is, is we're building more of those than nice. we are the 14s. Um, I think what people find is just a little bit more of an investment. They can put more people in the boat. The Open 16, you can comfortably sail with six people versus in the 14, um, you have four, so. Yeah, I had a sturdy cat. That was okay. My, my first uh, love affair with cat boats started with a sturdy. Yep. Um, and yeah, I had the same thing. Yeah. I was out there with my wife, and it was perfect. And yep. then kids came along. Right. And I said, boy, this is a little bit small. Right. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more room. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Um, okay, why don't, we, uh, why don't we transition into, uh, into your sailing school? I know that's a big draw here. I, it, it looks very interesting to me if you weren't so far from... My place in uh, in West Yarmouth. I'd, I'd love to bring my kids over, um, but yeah, Todd, why do you want to talk a little about the sailing school? Sure, sailing school um, is another anniversary year. This is our fiftieth year teaching sailing. Um, it's been kind of fun because I, uh, over the years here, I've met people in their sixties who first learned to sail here at Aries Pond, and have since um, uh, a couple of them I think off hand one is a big time j24 racer in newport has done very well and i've met another fellow who ended up with a hinkley and sailed around the world wow and and there are other stories like that but those are the two that stand out and they're they're people they were teenagers that learned how to sail and at the time the sailing school was in the pond and they were sailing uh o'day widgeons okay and they were the, the instructor was on a float and they sail in circles around the float and he'd be hollering and uh, they would be doing whatever they he'd tell them to do. Now it's a little different um, because the pond is so full of boats about 10 years ago we moved the sailing school down the river into Pleasant Bay, Little Pleasant Bay and so the students get a launch ride down the river and they sail um, Beetle Cats and Aries Pond 14s and Day Sailors um, typically we find we're the bunny slope, we're the entry level. Mm-hmm. We get, um, young people starting at the age of six, technically it's eight, but we do get six year olds. Um, and we're a one week program, uh, all summer long. So the kids would come in on a Monday and they're done on a Friday and then the following week's a whole new group. So we're introducing, uh, young uh, kids to sailing to try and get them excited about it so we make it fun it is a school we teach teach it like a school they get homework um, and they do the the knot tying and and they have a curriculum Monday through Friday um, this is Anita hi hi Anita 
Hi, how Joe. are you? Good, good. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Uh, I'm Joe Jeff. Lavoy. Hi. 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 Boat works. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. And, um, and so the, uh, the kids then, we hope, will go on to the yacht clubs yeah. or to the, to the summer programs. That's, that's kind of the goal. Get them excited. And, or it's the, uh, the one-week renters, that sort of thing. The summer people, just people here to visit. Yep. And we do get a lot of uh, kids from Europe. Um, they come through just because their fam family decided to rent for a week or so here. So. Excellent. What, um, what does a day look like at, at the school? Is it a, a nine to five day or? Um, yeah, it, it's, uh, well, no, no, no. Um, it's, uh, it's a two hour program. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. They, the kids arrive at nine and they're out of, uh, nine thirty and they're out of here at one, uh, in the, uh, just after lunch. Right. So four hours, um, and the uh, then in the afternoons it's private lessons for adult, for all ages. So with Great. the six instructors, they're going all you know weather permitting all day long. You may see me this summer. Yeah. I, my my daughter is gung ho about sailing, but my son is uh, he's yeah. kind of wishy washy. So I, I might yeah. uh, maybe bring him out and introduce him. He's yeah, we we like to say we make it fun. I mean they you know we match him up with the in the right boat. There's an instructor in each boat, mm -hmm. so there's not that, that fear factor. You know, we want to, want them to be learning, not worrying, or if you get a wise guy, they're making the other kids not. Right. So there, there's an instructor in each boat who's not necessarily sailing the boat, but just sitting there and making sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, right. learning. What, uh, do you know the cost of the, the class? Of it's, the uh, it's 260 for the, I mean, in that, in that range. Yeah, so. yep. For uh, the 10 hours, um, well, what it, well, for the week. For the sailing, week, yeah. Yeah, okay. sailing program. Excellent, excellent. And Friday's a race day. It's kind of fun. Oh, great. Yeah, great. so everything they learn they Monday. To show off. It, yeah, and then we group them together, which she thinks is going to be the most competitive, and, and we just show them a little bit of what a race is like. And, they, and they love that. That's their, their goal, you know, it's just, be able to leave saying oh, we won we won so, that's perfect yeah uh okay um and this is probably we'll wrap it up here is um what do you have any events going on do you guys know an event calendar so far i know uh we spoke briefly about the capital association uh kind of gathering right. right here right um for 22 years we've uh we've hosted the what we call the aries pond capo gathering mm -hmm. and that started with six boats and the last five, six years, we've had close to 100 boats. One year we had 120, 30 sign up, and because of the weather, it was uh, like 98 started, something like that. Wow. Um, it's, a, it's a big local. We're fortunately so many cat boats in Pleasant Bay. I don't even really have to advertise it. It's just a word of mouth uh, thing that's local. But we do have people who've trailered from Vermont, from Chesapeake Bay, uh, just to get a taste of what Capo Racing is all about. Oh, that's great. But we make it fun. There's a group in every class that starts that are there to win, to sail the best, and they have the experience. But 70% um, everyone's out there just to having fun. having fun. We call it a parade of sail. Um, we really don't want it to be... A, a race race in the true sense of the word. We want it to, to be more of a fun event. So that this year it's August 9th, um, and we have a warm-up race on the 8th. Uh, and then Sunday is generally a clean-up day, but there is a Namakoid, a local racing association, has their race that people can do as well. Excellent. Yep. Okay, uh, I think I'll wrap it up there. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's great. I, I encourage everyone to get get out here and visit this place. It's beautiful, um, and uh, I'm going to go for a tour, and I'm very excited. Sure. So thanks so much for coming. Sure. And, yeah. Uh, and Thank we'll you. To you soon. Okay. Thank you. Yep. yep. Well, that's going to do it for this month's episode. So until next month, um, I will see you. I don't have another interview lined up for next month, so. Uh, 
it'll be as much of a surprise to me as it is to you. <laughs> Uh, make sure you connect with me on Facebook, um, Twitter, and Flickr. Give me a like, a tweet, or a flick. <laughs> I don't know what you do on Flickr. Uh, and, uh, and spread the word out there. If you've got friends that are into boating, or if you know a boating group that you'd like me to reach out to, uh, if you've got an a interest group on Facebook or a Yahoo group or something like that that, that you think might be interested in this podcast... Uh, reach out to them, to them yourself or let me know and I'd be happy to reach out to some folks and, and let them know what I'm all about. I just want to get the word out and, uh, and keep doing what I'm doing because I really enjoy it and, uh, and I look forward to bringing you another interesting story next month. Fair winds, y'all.